Hey guys, welcome back to Jay's Speed Shop. Uh, so today we're going to be installing a Lippert uh, jacket, uh, double bike rack on a uh, camper. It, it mounts on the tongue of the camper where the uh, underneath the jack, the front power jack. And uh, we'll kind of walk you through the steps to install this thing. This is for, uh, again, it's a Lippert jacket, model number 429756. So this is the box that comes in. Um, not, I'll show you the parts that came with it as well, but basically it mounts there right on, on the, on above the, uh, on the tongue of the trailer, um, and allows you to, you know, get the bikes out of the bed of your truck. Um, you know, for me, I love the other option I looked at was putting a, uh, receiver on the front of my truck so I could put a bike rack on the front. Um, and they do make kits that put those receivers on the truck, but. It, it means kind of cutting a hole in the bumper and stuff like that. They didn't really want to do, um, you know, I've typically just laid the bikes in the bed, but then when I try to take firewood with me, it just kind of run out of space and just a pain in the ass. Cause you gotta take the tires off the, cause I try to get the, everything under the tonneau cover too. So I try to get the bikes, um, you know, lay a layer of firewood in and try to lay the bikes on there and you gotta take the front wheels off. So in order to get them to lay flat enough to, to, uh, be able to get the tonneau cover on. Um, the other option is to put a receiver on the back of the camper. Um, most of your standard campers, the rear bumper is not strong enough. You can buy a, a clamp on uh, receiver that just clamps the back bumper with two U bolts. Um, those usually are not recommended. Um, you know, the, the you know, even though your spare tire is like mounted to the your spare tire doesn't weigh as much as a couple bikes, and two, it's that weight's almost sitting on top of the bumper versus, you know, when you put the bikes on there, they're leveraging, they're hanging out behind the bumper and they're leveraging on, on your bumper. And what will happen is that those thin bumpers will start to twist or crack and break. And um, I've seen happen on a, a pop-up we had when I was a kid uh, where the bike rack was a different kind of bumper. So not exactly the same, but uh, the previous owner installed the bike rack on the back and it was, uh, Mounted to the bumper and then also kind of reinforced to the to the uh, spare tire that was mounted on the back. And we were going down the road and uh, fortunately somebody, uh, I can't remember if my mom was behind us. My, I was in the car with my dad, separate cars, going someplace on our way back from someplace. But, or somebody else flagged us down, but there was a, the spare tire mount pulled out of the back. It was just basically mounted to wood, with wood screws to the back of the pop-up. And that put all the then uh, pressure of those bikes hanging off the back on the bumper. The bumper just started to twist, and it was it twisted almost forty five degrees to the point where the the bikes were just tires were within an inch or two of hitting the ground. You know, one big bump, and they would hit the ground and then smack back up into the back of the camper and done a bunch of damage. So fortunately, we caught it, and I don't know what we did. I think we ended up strapping the bikes to the roof of the camper to get them home, but. Um, Anyway, so this is a good alternative to the back bumper. You can weld the rec have a weld receiver welded onto the back of the camper. That's another option. Um, I also wanted to put a, uh, a mount for my grill on the bumper if I could. I haven't found one that works exactly. I was going to make my own. As our bumpers kind of on the we have a a, a Grand Design Imagine twenty six seventy, and the rear bumper is actually recessed partially under the body, and so a lot of those types of items that clamp to the bumper don't work on that because they need to, the clamps need to go the way they were set them out. The clamps kind of are supposed to go down over the, over the bumper and you can't get them over the bumper because of the bumper being recessed. So this seemed like a good option. It had good reviews online. Um, we'll see. I think it'll be okay to put them on and off because I'll be able to stand on the tailgate and do it. Um, and we'll see, we'll see how, how it works. If I decide that it's too much of a pain, uh, my wife's bike is pretty light, so I think it'll go on the inside towards the uh, camper and mine will go on the outside towards the truck. But we'll see how they mount up. So these are the parts that come with it. So it's basically the, the main frame, these two additional frame pieces, and then two uh, boxes of hardware. Um, what I'm going to do first is to put the, uh, I got some jack stands under here, under the tongue. I'm going to drop the uh, trailer down so it's being supported by the jack stands. And 
and that'll allow me to remove the jack. Um, I am hoping. Hmm. Well, that would be interesting. I'm not sure that there's enough slack in that cord. The instructions actually, so if I guess issue number one is the instructions do not tell you how to remove the jack. It just says remove the tongue jack. So I um, have to see where this red wire goes because I don't think there's enough slack there to be able to pull this thing out. Um, so, you know, when you pull it out, you're going to have this hole here. So I think you have to take the bottom plate off and then uh, actually maybe with the jack, if I fully bring it up all the way, Maybe it'll be short enough to pop out. Um, if not, I may have to figure out where that red wire goes and disconnect it because it does not, it's just built, built right into the bottom of the housing. It doesn't have a spot to unplug it. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, by taking the tank cover off, it just slides off. It gave just enough room for this to give enough slack because before it was having to wrap around that tank cover. Um, although I did accidentally pull out the little clip in the bottom that holds this in place, so it just uh, snaps together. So I'll have to put that back on. And so I'll show it to you. Just this little clip. And it just goes around the wire snaps and then snaps into the bottom of the of the unit. So I'll put that back on. So while I was in there, I was a little worried because this is kind of loose that it had pulled out and it didn't work, but it's because I didn't have any screws in, so I wasn't getting a ground. So once I put a ground screw in, then it works. So I just need to pop this back on just so the wire's supported. Um, but uh, basically what I did is I was just barely able to pull this out enough that I could slide the base in there and then sit it back down. But it was it was fairly easy. It's a little top heavy, um, you know, obviously because the motor's up here, but not nothing bad, um, but it came uh, together pretty good. Sorry, I can't, uh, I'm a little afraid to put my phone in a stand out here today because it's windy and I'm afraid it'll blow over. So I'm just gonna try and film this in steps as I go. Okay, here you can see the hardware kit that come, the two hardware kits opened up. This one's mostly all the arms for mounting the bikes themselves. Once you get, get it assembled, this is the additional hardware that comes with it. Um, so you can see these are the standard screws. They send you these longer replacements. The frame is actually threaded, um, so there's no nuts to go on these, but they send you some extra washers and uh, and stuff to help support the uh, the bikes. But make sure you use their screws because the factory ones won't be long enough. Okay, step one. Um, got this installed with the new bolts with the washer and lock washer. Um, not bad, these are 9 16 easy to get to. Um, easy to do the back ones from behind, have your ratchet towards the tanks. And then I fixed that wire. I just snapped that fitting around there and snapped it back into the bottom of the housing and we're all good. Now you can see I got, I got power. So it was just a ground earlier. And, uh, so now we're going to step two. Also want to point out before I get too far here. So for those that didn't know, and I didn't know this until fairly recently is this plug exposes a nut that I'm um, sure it's in the instructions too, but exposes a nut that allows you to manually operate your um, jack. So if your jack loses power or the motor dies, you could do that. So what they do is the way this is made, so it has, you know, you can remove this piece, or I'm sorry, this piece, you can't, but the piece that goes into this square tube here, you can remove fairly easily. And then you could pull the plug and you can still access your uh, jack uh, the nut through there that allows the jack to go up and down. And it just uses your standard, uh, the uh, wrench that works for your uh, jacks, your uh, stabilizer jacks, is the same wrench that works in uh, in this. Now, obviously, that's still long enough, but they'll still be able to reach in there and, and operate it. So, anyways, if you didn't know that, I actually bought a bottle jack that I carry with me camping because I was always af afraid that this thing would die, that I'd be stuck. Um, it also has some removable caps here. I'm not sure what's under those ones, but uh, I just have to read the manual and see. Those ones would be a little, I mean, you can pop the pop them out, but they're gonna be blocked by the jack, but I'm not sure what those ones are for. Um, maybe for disassembling the uh, this unit somehow. But uh, 
anyway, someone point that out that there's, uh, there's access there to, to still get to that manual jack. So anyways, that's mounted. We'll go on to the next step. The next step is we're going to install this neck. Um, it uses one of these bolts that have, here, I'll try and show it real quick, but it's got a spot for a pin at the end. And this center part's threaded all the way through. Basically, you're going to put this all the way through. Tighten it down. Oh, something else hangs off these pins. I haven't read the instructions all the way through yet, to be honest. I'm just kind of going step by step here. So basically, they say you need a 916th socket and a 3 4th socket to install this thing. Um, it was, on my particular case, the old bolts holding the jack in place were uh, one half inch, so I did have to get a one half inch socket to take that apart. Um, again, it's got the spot for pin. I'm going to uh, stick it in there for now to set up and lose it. I don't know that it serves any of that's just a emergency shit really goes to hell. That's going to save it all from coming apart, I guess. I said some uh, Loctite on the, uh, it's nice and solid. Doesn't, doesn't rattle around at all. So, um, I said some Loctite on the threads would have been fine, but we'll see. Maybe that gets used for something else down the road here. So next up is part E, which goes on the same way. So this goes in the same way. Again, it's, uh, it's threaded. You know, I think the tricky... Oops, there's my pen. Um... Tricky part to uh, think when you mount bikes on this is that I believe you're hanging one back here in this space. Um, and I think that's where on my truck, if I fold my tailgate down when I'm connected, my tailgate comes right about to this, uh, right up to this box. In fact, if I think if I'm turned crooked, I may not even be able to uh, get my tailgate down. But if I'm fairly straight, my tailgate comes down pretty much right in front of that. I should be able to stay on that to put the bikes on. So this is uh, attaching the, I guess they call these the bike wings. Um, so they slide over and have pins that go on, holds them in place. And then it's got these sleeves, which you kind of can slide around to adjust when your bike's on there to keep it from hitting or rubbing. I did find instructions that these are just for an extra safety precaution. So that's, they just hang there and I guess if that bolt were to work loose, it keeps it from falling out completely. Um, so we'll go on to the next step, which is attaching the little arms that hold the bikes. And then once we got those on, uh, maybe we'll try putting a bike on here and see what it looks like. I only have one bike home right now. We gotta get the other ones in storage. So here, go grab that, but um, see what it looks like. So I'm gonna say I forgot to a step in the last sequence. These stop, what do they call them? Um, sway stop pins need to go on uh, before you put this, slide this out. I mean, it's no big deal. You can just pull this pin, slide it off, put them on. It comes with four of these. It says two are optional. The instructions only, and I'm going to say, I'm going to give these instructions like a C minus because they're, uh, the pictures are really hard to read. They don't have enough angles or something. I don't know if it's what, or it may just my eyes, but I think the stick straight out like this. And I think what happens um, and again, they only show one being installed. Like any of their, none of their pictures doesn't show both of them on there. Um, so I think one goes facing the back, one goes facing the front. And what these are is I believe you would, you slide them up and down, you adjust them so that they catch kind of uh, right below your, your tire. And, and then there's a strap, uh, rubber straps that kind of clip on here and wrap around your tire and wrap clip back on and that keeps your i think keeps your front tire from 
twisting back and forth. Because it says only you really only need two, but there's two more optional. Um, so I'm going to kind of get, just put two on, get a bike on here, see what it looks like. Because um, it says it's optional if you want to have both tires secured. So, you know, if you want to keep the, your tires from spinning as you go down the road, which is kind of a good idea, I usually try to put a bungee cord or something like that. I think you can just use these. So as long as they don't get too much in the way. It is a fairly tight fit here. I'm not going to lie. Um, to uh, to bring the, the bike in here. So it'll be interesting to see. I mean, this... People say they use these all the time on these Imagine trailers. This is a 2670MK. Um, but I'm guessing the spacing up on the front is pretty similar for all the Imagine travel trailers. The uh, So you have maybe 18 inches to a f maybe 24 inches at the top there, roughly. Um, so one thing I'm thinking is as you put it on, the risk, I think, is as you're putting it on is, is hitting your pedal against the uh, the fiberglass here. So I think what I'm going to do is put a find a, an old sock or a couple old socks and put on the pedals. So that way they're not uh, going to do damage to the fiberglass. I spent a lot of time waxing this stuff. I don't want it to get all messed up. Um, so I'm going to put the arms on for the bikes, and then we'll try putting uh, getting the one bike down here and seeing how it fits. And... Uh, Maybe if I get ambitious, I'll go over and get the other one out of storage. So I got to put the pins in for holding the bike on. They just slide in holes, and they've got little clips that uh, you can see that that hold them in. So they swivel there. Um, I just guessed on where to put them for right now until I get the bikes over here. The um, one thing I noticed is I took that tank cover off, and I'm wondering if it's going to go back on there with the sun here. I may have to, if if it doesn't, I just have to take this one bolt out and this top hole unit comes off from the top. So not the end of the world. And then these are the, the rubber straps that go on and they basically, we'll show how they go on, but they basically pop onto here. One goes back here, you sit your bike in, then you wrap around and hook it in place. So I'm hoping these things work well. It should be okay, I'll have to play with them because we've got one men's bike, one women's bike. Um, so they mount a little differently, but we'll see uh, which one uh, works best. I'm thinking I want to put the woman's bike back here because it's lighter and just be easier to maneuver back here. Um, but not the end of the world if I have to do it the other way around. And then these straps also go on the uh, these pins as well. So let me uh, see if I can get this tank cover on, and then we'll... Uh, Try getting a bike out here and at least hang one on, see what it looks like. Okay, first of all, the tank cover did come on, go back on, no problem, without having to remove anything. I mean, it's a little snug, but it uh, took two seconds to get it on there. And I installed these latches. Again, then once you put your bike on, your bike's hanging in there, you're going to come strap down whichever one. That's what holds it in place. So I'm going to get a bike and uh, see how it fits, and maybe I'll go get the other bike and go from there. So we got the first bike up. Um, I left my kickstand down, so it's hitting the racks. It's not quite sitting perfect right now. But um, So one thing I determined, and I, I don't know why in my head, I was picturing that the hooks were going to hook under the frame, but they're way too wide. I mean, these this is on some of the lower pegs, and it's way too wide of a spread on those. So they actually, and I, again, there's only one picture of a bike on the rack and it's kind of almost looks like a kid's bike um but it actually hangs by the tires um and if it's hanging by the tires my tires aren't going to spin so i'm not sure what these pins are really going to do for me what i'm thinking is and again i get with the kicks in there it's hard to tell because it's hitting that maybe these, these should go and you could turn them either way is this should go parallel to the bike frame and then you'd have a spot to maybe strap like if it was up here you could strap your center bar or something, something they would keep the bike from rocking rocking back and forth um and i guess it does the same thing if it's coming through the tire too you get that same effect if it's if you're yeah maybe that would be if you're down low it could grab your tire 
So I don't know, we'll play around with it. It's gonna take a little bit of adjustment to get to get them two bikes on here and sing the way I want them. So I think I'm gonna go get the other bike so I can uh, play around with it some more. But it uh, it works and it's you know it seems it's, I mean the bike's moving, but the the rack doesn't doesn't uh, I don't know if I'm probably too close to it, but it doesn't move a whole lot. Um, obviously no problems with that front bike hitting. Um, a little bit concerned about the rear bike and and again maybe that's with it whatever bike can mount up high higher and the higher you go the more clearance you have against the that's why i put the rear ones up higher but maybe the higher you put that then the more likely you are you're going to want to have these pegs for the sway and again i'm not sure if this is the right direction for those but they can be moved um but Take a couple tries to get stop right, and then you can see the this is touching there, so it's kind of keeping what it's supposed to be doing. I just it would be seeing better if my kickstand wasn't out, so I will uh, correct that the next time I put it out there. This foot had to come off in order to pull the jack out because there's a bracket on the bottom of the frame where I put both the top and bottom. There's brackets that will not allow the uh, would not allow this jack to be removed if that foot was on there, and that foot's just held on by a, a pin. And a uh, or pin with a uh, show the just one of these guys holding it on. So I'm gonna stick that back on before I forget. And then uh, I, and, and I, I don't know if I showed this or not, but I supported it with jack stands. I brought two jack stands out from the garage. Just make sure, and before you do this, make sure that you're you have your jacks up off the grounds because you want to start messing with this. Uh, Obviously, most of you should know this, but you're not going to want to start raising the front up and down. I didn't, almost didn't think of it because it was in the driveway versus at a campsite where I'm hooking up. But I uh, made sure the jacks were all lifted and then uh, raised it up enough a little bit. Where actually, I didn't even raise it. I just dropped it down and uh, onto the jack stands. And then I'll raise it back up and take the jack stands out. And uh, we'll try getting a second bike on here. I'm going to pull the truck up too so I can kind of see how this will work when I'm trying to load or unload. This is what it looks like installed. both bikes up there so you can see i have my truck i don't have it hooked up to the trailer but I have it approximately where it would sit i can just usually it might actually come back a little further because it's usually fairly tight between the tailgate and the uh and the jack but it does open when i've got my uh hitch on and uh you can kind of see that when you're staying up the tailgate it's really pretty easy to put these up here the bike in the back I just lift it over um because when you're staying up here it's it's a pretty easy it's a fairly light bike too now if you had a really heavy bike I don't know um I put a sock I don't know if you can see that but I put a sock over the pelt so as I'm lifting because you do come pretty close to the, the front cap I put a sock over that just to keep it from if it were to hit but we've got probably I don't know let's see how much clearance so almost an iPhone so probably how big this phone is but uh probably have six inches there five inches but you can see if, if it wobbles around this could take a major failure of this thing to for that to end up uh hitting the trailer so we'll give a good test we're taking it on a trip here pretty soon so um see what it does but uh what i did is for these I can't what they call these things but these spikes that they have here to me, it looked like they had them perpendicular to the bikes. Um, and you could basically, they just slide on to the frame and they just have a screw that, or a wing nut that clamps them down. And you can slide them up and down. But you can position them either way. I put them so that they are parallel to the bikes. And then you can see that one I just wrapped around the frame. Um, on this one, I just grabbed a spoke on the wheel. Just, you know, it's not real tight, just enough to keep it from moving around. It's not going to hurt the spoke. Um, and I think that's how I ended up grabbing the front ones on both bikes too, is just around the spoke. Um, the other option, and, and maybe I'll decide like something different, but you can have them sticking out. So they're, if you can get them low enough where they're down here below your tire, and then you could probably wrap this band around your whole rim. And tighten it down yeah 
this outer bike probably doesn't even need them, but the inner the inner bike I wanted what what they oh they're called sway control. And what they do is they keep the bike from swinging this way, so it keeps your pedal, keeps your all your pedal and everything from being able to get close to the any closer to the cap. So this bike you can see it does not sway at all away from the. Uh, and I could probably just even with just the one I did on the on the center of the frame there, that is probably enough. But I do have one on the front tire as well. But uh, took a little playing around. You see, there's lots of different holes where you can set these things. So they go all the way down here. Um, they're kind of behind these pads. He's got these little adjustable pads that slide up and down that, you know, give you, so you can put them where the, they cushion your bikes. Your bike's not hitting the frame. Um, the, uh, get most of ours, though, they're pretty good. Um, and so you can adjust, you can slide those. These just slide up and down. And then, you just, again, you can, the hooks that hold the t tires, you can set to these different holes and kind of get the bikes to the level you want. So, you know, with this one, I wanted, I ended up raising this out, outer bike up a little bit so that the handlebars weren't touching the seat of the other bike. And so that the uh, um, other thing is I want to make sure I wanted that pedal on this one to be this bike up enough so this pedal had room to get under the frame. At first, it was hitting like up here. And I wanted to have, to have this pedal in the upright position because that puts it farthest away from the cap just because of the way the cap slopes. So if you have it in the down position, you lose a couple inches of clearance. Um, so overall, I think it's going to work pretty good. And so it was pretty easy. Um, instructions were not the clearest. Not, not awful, but just the, some of the pictures, it was hard to tell exactly how they had, had it going together. And again, these sway control bars, um, you could potentially put differently. What I found was... Putting them perpendicular to the bike on this outer one that sits lower, I think it would have been okay because I could have had them right here as so they kind of hit the rim. Um, but what I found, especially on the inside bike, that it was getting caught in the spokes as I was trying because that's all I initially had them. So they're stuck out the back. But as I was trying to set the bike down, they were getting caught. And it, it may again it may just been a matter of adjustment to to make them. So I'll, I'll play around with it and see if I decide I want to switch them the other way. But for right now, I think this works pretty good. And it's uh, it seems pretty solid because again, all those are doing is keeping the bikes from swaying. There's not a lot of a lot of stress on them. And it's mostly that inside bike that I'm worried about, and where that one really counts is where I have it around the frame here, and then hold it. And then these things just pop off. I mean, you just kind of slide these up, and you can see they just pop off like that. So they come off pretty easy, and then they just stretch out and pop them back on like that. So. I didn't do that one quite as tight that time, but it's because I'm doing it one-handed. But it uh, works pretty good. And uh, so we'll give it a try in our, our first trip of the summer next year, or next year, next week, and uh, see what it does. But overall, i got to cut this uh, packaging off here yet. But uh, when we get these bikes down put away, it's getting dark. But hopefully this is helpful for anybody considering this type of jack or this type of bike rack. Um, again, I kind of can show you on the on the back side. These, uh, and this is, I don't know if anybody has this uh, issue with these caps for the storing your uh, hoses in the bumper. You can see how thin and walled these these bumpers are. And I mean, you put a bolt through here and start really tight, you're just going to crush these walls. Um, but I know a lot of people have problems with these caps. Every time you, you know, stop to get gas or rest here, you look and these caps are popping off. So I just drilled a single hole that goes through the bumper and through the cap and got one of these little pins from the hardware store. And like that, I don't have to worry about them ever falling off. They might work a little bit loose on the outside edge. And you can put one on the outside edge if you want to. I didn't really didn't know why you want one sticking out there. You could put one on the bottom front here. But one, just make sure that they won't fall off. So they might... You know, it might work its way out a little bit, you know, like that. You get to rest areas like that, but it's not going to go anywhere because it's got it's pinned on. But anyway, so the way the bumper's tucked on this trailer, it's underneath the body. And, you know, you can see that spare tires made, especially so the clamps come from the backside. A lot of the bike racks and hitches you see, they want the U-bolts to come down from the top 
so that they you know has a surface that clamps up under here and like you know to put the like those kind of little fake receivers on the back and then you got to drop your u-bolts on the front wall this bumper that doesn't work very well there may be other ones on the market i haven't really researched it because again my understanding is that when you put the weight of bikes on these and especially if you want to clear your spare tire you got to have the bikes out quite a ways because your spare tire sticks out quite a ways so see even if you put a receiver here now you need to have your bikes out here to clear the spare tire I mean, I don't want to have to put the spare tire in the back of my truck. I just got, you know, my whole purpose of this was to get the bikes out of the back of the truck. So I don't want to put the spare tire in there. Um, and having that weight on these things, um, you know, it's not good for them. But again, you can put a receiver on the back of the uh, camper if you want. That's an option. Have that welded on. If you know how to weld, they're a professional. And so the other option I looked at, and I'll show you real quick was a receiver that goes on the front of the truck and allows you to put like a hitch mounted bike rack on the front of the truck. And I was going to go that direction until I decided to try that, but you would have to cut through like in my truck, it's this chrome piece on the front and basically you'd have the little square receiver kind of just wouldn't stick out very far, but it'd be kind of on the front and you know, whatever. I just don't think they look that nice. So, but you know, if that's an option, that's an option for you too. If uh, if you want to go that way. But anyways, that's the end of this video. If you like this and it's helpful, please uh, hit the like button or subscribe. And uh, uh, thanks from uh, J Speed Shop for watching.